Hi, it's DeWire. It's Sunday, April 25th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Well, let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, years ago, in an earlier generation, a young fighter named Cassius Clay had a guy he idolized, a wrestler who called himself Gorgeous George. Clay would tell people that George wasn't trying to be liked. He wanted to be hated. Clay thought people came to see George, to see him lose. Clay was mesmerized. Years later, after he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, Ali would name George as an inspiration, someone he modeled himself after. That's Jake Paul today, folks. Forget the image. He's savvy. He's calculated. To paraphrase Ice Cube, Jake Paul is the fighter you love to hate. I don't care what his past is. YouTuber, as if that's a bad thing, but YouTuber, whatever. As I said in a pre-fight video for his last fight, Jake Paul has skills. Two fights ago, he dropped Nate Robinson while leaning backward. He throws a pinpoint right hand to end the Ben Askren fight in the first round. Folks, this guy has first round power. He can stop you early. He's good and he's real. Now all of that said, he's not Floyd Mayweather. Right? There's talk that his next fight is going to be against Floyd. I know that he's going to outweigh Floyd by something like 30 pounds, minimum. Folks, the weights won't matter. Right? In the old days, fighters like Henry Armstrong, Stanley Kitchell, Bob Fitzsimmons, folks, these are legendary names, would fight guys outside of their weight class and would beat them, would pick up titles. These guys wouldn't even gain weight for the higher weight class. They would come in weighing several pounds less than their opponents, and they would beat them or knock them down. You had a recent fight, Steve Cunningham. Years into his retirement, yes, the same Steve Cunningham, who dropped Tyson Fury and who, in my opinion, today would give Tyson Fury a tougher fight than Anthony Joshua was going to. Steve Cunningham was years into a retirement. Keep in mind, Cunningham's heyday was as a cruiserweight. He got challenged by Frank Muir, much bigger man, heavier man, and they asked Cunningham before the fight, which Cunningham ends up winning about the weight gap. And Cunningham simply said, look, weights don't matter at elite levels. Now let's face it. I don't think anyone here is going to take Teofimo Lopez over Tyson Fury. Right? At some points, the weights do matter, but not here. Because Floyd is immensely skilled. Because Floyd has always been a defensive guru. Right? You can't hurt what you can't hit. Let me also point out, too, that Floyd is in the gym with Young Lions. Right, He's involved in the preparation of Devin Haney and others. Floyd's not the guy who hit the buffet table the minute he retired and who forgot how to get to a gym. Right, Floyd's a guy who owns a gym. Floyd's a guy in the gym often with current fighters, right? So Floyd, like Vladimir Klitschko, like Evander Holyfield, who, of all the old guys, 
I think is going to look the best in the ring the longest. And keep in mind, Holofield's older than Tyson. Floyd Mayweather has never been out of shape that I know of, right? I've followed Floyd's career for years. I've never looked at Floyd and thought, oh, man, look at that pot belly. Uh-oh, Mayweather's been living the too-good life. Never thought that. Floyd looks like he's kept himself in great shape. Steve Cunningham, by the way, said, look, my goal is to reach 100 in great shape. Right? The guy's dedicated to physical fitness. Never lose that athletic mindset. So I believe Floyd is in great shape for his age. Don't get me wrong. I take Floyd at 27 over Floyd today. Right? I'm not saying Father Time has a knock on Floyd's door. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying, though, is Floyd is the guy who's still in great shape. Right versus a regular person, Floyd's in spectacular shape. Now, Jake Paul is serious about his craft. You saw that when he entered the ring, and you noticed BJ Flores, very savvy former fighter, was in the ring with him. Then you understood that Jake Paul has actually surrounded himself with some pretty savvy people. In other words, he's preparing with boxing people. And he has guys like BJ Flores who really prioritize defense and strategy. So I have no doubt that Jake Paul is in shape. Here's the problem. You heard me refer to Jake Paul's pinpoint right hand. Right, folks, that's the punch that lines up with Mayweather's here trigger left hook. In other words, Jake Paul is going to be trying to loosen his right hand to throw it. And, of course... Floyd Mayweather can throw that left hook all day. Look at the Diego Corrales fight. He can throw that left hook all day. He has ring coverage on the left hook. I believe Canelo has modeled his left hook after Mayweather's left hook. Right? Mayweather can fight low. He doesn't have to open himself up for counters to throw that here trigger left hook. That left hook is going to keep. In my opinion, Jake Paul's right hand, which is Paul's big punch, in the holster. Paul's going to be afraid to open up because of Mayweather's here trigger left hook. The other problem, too, is Paul can fight. There's no question about that. But can he box? Mayweather is not a guy who needs to put himself at risk deep in the pocket. Mayweather can take a step back and outbox you. Look at the discrepancy. It was a gap in boxing ability when Mayweather fought Saul Alvarez. Right? Canelo, who's a master boxer, was losing round after round to Mayweather. Right? Mayweather doesn't have to try to knock out Jake Paul, although he could. That's probably the likely outcome because of Mayweather's left hook. Right? Don't get me wrong. This prediction will change if you hear that Mayweather has suffered an injury. Right? A left shoulder injury before the fight KOs this entire video. But if Mayweather's healthy, if that left hook is still there, if he doesn't have rotator cuff problems, or you aren't hearing about tendinitis and stuff like that. Well, that left hook can drop Jake Paul, even if Jake Paul weighs 190 pounds. Right? That's a great left hook. Now, don't get me wrong. I know Mayweather's been retired for years. But what I've found is that when a fighter has an A-plus skill, just like with basketball players, where Chris Mullen can hit the gym and outshoot, which he did, by the way, in a contest. Kevin Durant, right? I'm sure Reggie Miller right now can show up and outshoot 99% of the population. The other 1% being guys like Steph Curry, right? I believe Mayweather's left hook, the timing, will always be there as long as he's healthy. And I believe things that 
a guy who learned how to box in his 20s has to think about head movement, pivoting, right, fighting low. I believe a guy like Mayweather just knows that intrinsically. He spent his entire career in the sport. Let's remember, Mayweather's not first-generation boxer in his family, right? There's Floyd Sr. There's Uncle Roger. In other words, Mayweather's a guy who had big-time boxers in the family, world-ranked boxers in the family, right? Floyd Sr. famously fought Ray Leonard, right? Roger fought Julio Cesar Chavez, and I mean the original, not Junior. So Mayweather's a guy who, I'm sure, from the time he was a little kid, understood the value of certain boxing skills, right? So for me, as good as Jake Paul has looked in his fights, he delivered for us in the Ben Askren fight, right? As much of a puncher as I believe Jake Paul is, I don't believe he has a chance against Floyd Mayweather. Let's remember, Mayweather has an O on his record. He's never lost as a pro. If you go back to his time in the Olympics where he didn't get the gold medal, that's a bit of a farce. The guy he was fighting couldn't land on him. Right? But we all understand Olympic scoring, right? Roy Jones didn't get the gold medal. Right? Uh, Joe Joyce, in another robbery, in my opinion, didn't get the gold medal. So, put me among those who believes that Mayweather, if the odds are accurate, should be going off at you, Jobs. Right? A 10 to 1 favorite or something like that. I believe a portion of the public is going to say, wow, I saw Jake Paul land with accuracy on Nate Robinson and, for as long as it lasted, show some accuracy and power against Ben Askren, right? You're going to see the guys together, and you're going to say, wow, Jake Paul is so much bigger than Floyd, right? You're going to look at Jake Paul, and you're going to see hardly any body fat. You're going to look at the ages. You're going to say, oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, he has a huge advantage on Floyd Mayweather. I think what the boxing world is figuring out now, especially with these older fights, right, where guys are coming back. Mike Tyson is coming back from years outside the ring is that older fighters are better than we thought. I think the regulatory boards have overdone it. Keep in mind, Evander Holofield won his last pro fight, then had a problem getting another fight. You know why. Because these boxing commissions say, come on, man, how can you keep fighting at your age? Right? And, of course, young fighters are looking for any excuse not to fight a guy who looks dangerous on film. Right? And a young guy knows he's going to lose his reputation if he loses to a guy who's in his 40s or 50s. Well, we're finding out now that you can actually be competitive in your 40s. Look at the heavyweight division. Look at Luis Ortiz. Right? We're finding out right now that these older fighters actually know more than some of these younger fighters, right? Older fighters have experience. They have memories. They remember the fight where they didn't move their head that much, and they paid a price. Some young guy, Ryan Garcia, who's unbeaten, may not have had that experience, right? So I believe Floyd Mayweather more than most because Floyd's in the gym with young lions, right, is second generation in his family in terms of fighting, prided himself on technique, is highly thought of, but people have slept on his power, right, folks, look at the end of the Ricky Hatton fight. The way the Diego Corrales fight, and these were lions at the time, the way the Diego Corrales fight ends is Corrales' father, who was in his corner, 
throws in the towel on his son, who was unbeaten at the time. We've forgotten the Mayweather who ends fights. Right? Ends them. So I like Floyd here. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on Floyd by stoppage when the odds come out. Right? Let's face it. If Mayweather starts cracking Jake Paul with left hooks, either to the body or to the head, understand, you can chop down a tree. You're fighting a guy who is much bigger than you. You start to hit him in the rib cage and stuff, suddenly the guy's bent over, suddenly his head's in the pocket, right? If Mayweather decides that he wants to end this, which, by the way, is what he did against Conor McGregor, let's remember that. If Mayweather decides that this fight is not going to go the distance, I think he could end it, right? Understand, though, there is a risk with Mayweather, with, with Mayweather by stoppage. It's the number of rounds. You need to pay close attention. These fights involving older fighters now are only eight-round fights, right? So you need to look at this event. If it's 12 rounds, oh my goodness, Mayweather by stoppage becomes much more viable. <laughs> Much more viable. I think there's a difference between being in shape and being in boxing shape, right? Boxers can hang out, and then it's like, oh, it's the seventh, eighth round, and the boxer's like, okay, I'm still good. Meanwhile, the opponent who was, you know, Atlas in the first round is suddenly gasping for air, having problems keeping their hands up. Jake Paul's been winning fights early, hasn't he? So if this is a 12-round fight, I think Mayweather by KO is a great play in addition to Mayweather simply to win, right? Get better odds with Mayweather by stoppage. If it's an eight-round fight with two-minute rounds, not three-minute rounds, understand, this is paradoxical. The more minutes the round, the more it favors the older fighter, not the young guy. The more it favors the professional fighter, the guy who's accustomed to going to three minute rounds, who spent his entire career on three-minute rounds, right? In any event, I'm expecting Floyd to put on a show. I'm expecting Jake Paul to have problems from the opening bell. Understand, if it's an eight-round fight, Floyd's going to have to get to work early. He can't afford to give away the first two, three rounds and then expect to get a decision in an eight-round fight. That's too risky against a puncher who might get lucky one round. Stagger Floyd, and everyone says, oh, you know, and suddenly Floyd's down on the scorecards three rounds in an eight-round fight. You get a motivated Mayweather in the first round, and it's going to look like his first round did against Canelo. Folks, if you want to see Canelo look bad in a round, Please, look up the first round of his fight against Floyd Mayweather, right? I think Jake Paul's real. I think he's going up against one of the best ever. Sorry, Floyd, I say one of the best ever, right? Um, I've seen great fighters. Marlis Marvin, Sugar Ray, Leonard before me, I've seen films of Ray Robinson. Let's just say Floyd's in the conversation. I'm not going to anoint anyone TBE, <laughs> right? Uh, Ali. But uh, let's just say I think Jake Paul is going up against greatness here. And I don't care what Floyd's age is. I don't care what Floyd's size is. I believe Floyd's going to be the lion in the ring. I like Mayweather to beat Jake Paul. Who, who delivered for us in past fights? I like Mayweather to beat Jake Paul. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on Mayweather by KO. I'm going to get terrible odds because Mayweather's going to be favored. But understand, 
Conor McGregor got more attention from gamblers than he should have when he fought Mayweather. Right? You're going to have people looking at the size, falling into the hype. Right? So Floyd, even with the terrible odds casinos are offering, probably should be a longer favorite than he's going to go off at. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I think Floyd by KO is a distinct possibility. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.